Here's how to stimulate back buds in order to grow new branches on the trunk of your oak bonsai. We've got a great base, some beautiful bark, a little bit of movement and a nice thick trunk. But all of the branches start right at the top. These are the steps I take in order to stimulate new buds and new branches further down on the trunk. You get the tree healthy, you let it grow, thicken, and then when you judge the time to be right, we're gonna do a hard prune, we're gonna cut back. And that time is now. A couple of years ago, I repotted this tree. The soil was fully broken down. Got it into some uh, really good soil, which pumped up all of this growth. You need to grow the tree. It seems counterproductive. You want branches down here, so you let these ones up at the top get as big as possible. Doesn't seem right. Seems like the growth is getting further from the trunk, further from the base, rather than closer to the base, which is what we want. By growing the tree, not only do you pump up the health and the energy that it's got on board to promote those buds to grow as branches, it makes new vascular tissue as it thickens, is more likely to give rise to adventitious buds. We let the tree grow, extend its branches, build up a ton of energy, get really healthy, and then the next step is to cut back. Again, it seems counterproductive. We just let it grow and build all of these branches. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut it all off. When you understand the physiology of um, what's happening, it starts to make a bit more sense. So a tree wants to seek out as much light as it can. So what it will do is it will send growth to the top of the tree. The, trees, the top of the tree is really strong. It wants to, to get bigger. So it says to the buds lower down, don't grow yet, we're still growing taller until such a point that it decides where I don't need to get taller anymore, I will stop growing vertically and I'll start stretching outwards to make the most of the light that I've found. To do that, we cut back. That removes the hormone messages from the top of the tree that tell the, the buds further down not to grow. If we disrupt the message, those lower buds will then say, oh hey, now's our chance. We can grow out sideways and start to exploit the light that we're in. That's when we hopefully start to get buds growing from the trunk and give rise to new branches. So that is exactly what I'm gonna to do today. So once you've got the tree healthy and growing and it's, it's, it's really keen and eager to produce and grow back buds, you then have to think, right, what's my strategy? What, what's the timing and where am I going to place my hard cuts? Timing wise, we wanna do it when the tree is absolutely bursting with energy. That is now, just when the buds are about to start swelling in the spring. There are other windows, but this one is the absolute prime time for uh, the tree to have the most stored energy ready to push the growth. The more energy there is waiting to push new growth, the more um, likely it is that buds all along the trunk are gonna be stimulated to grow when we do this pruning. And then the position of the cut is also important. The lower I cut, the more likely it is that buds will form lower down on the trunk. But I also, I wanna have a backup because if I cut below this branch, I'm then relying on a roll of the dice. It's pure luck if I get buds here or here or here, or does it die back? At least if I give myself a backup plan, we've got that option should we need it. So if I cut too high, the risk is we don't get enough buds low down, or only the buds up here grow. If I cut too low, the risk is we don't get buds where we want, and then we've got to make a much smaller tree than we were hoping to. So the decision is, I'm going to cut back hard to the lowest viable branch that I could use as, um, uh, as the next section of trunk, or that I could use as the apex of my bonsai. I'm going to leave a bit of a stump above this. If I cut too low, the risk is that we get die back down this side of the trunk. I'm not going to cut diagonally, that creates a larger surface area of the wound, so more likelihood of dieback. And it also, um, it also has the risk of cutting through a node, and it's the node that will compartmentalize this wound. If I cut through this node, there's a high risk of dying back further down. Now we've got no choice but to create some sort of diagonal thing that limits our options uh, for um, healing in the future. Uh, before I do anything else, I'm gonna cut this branch off to make some space. So I'm gonna cut straight across. And I'm gonna aim to finish above this branch here, about a finger's width, if I can. Perfect.
and apply some paste to reduce the amount of air that's going to get into this wound and that is going to reduce the risk of dieback on this side. The live wood on this side is going to stop dieback here, it's this side we don't want to die back. Uh, with some water on my finger it stops the putty from sticking to my finger rather than the wood. There we go. That paste is going to reduce the risk of dieback. And then as this grows and thickens, um, the tree will produce vascular tissue in this area. And uh, when that vascular tissue develops and we can see a slight bulge, I will then either make a deadwood feature out of this or most likely I'll cut back to that new vascular tissue um, without any risk of dieback in order, to, in order to create a smooth transition as this thickens. We're not done yet. So this prune has removed all of the most dominant apical buds. So that in itself is gonna stimulate back budding to some degree. If I were to put the tree back outside and let it grow now, this uh, section is gonna to wanna to be the new apex and suppress lateral growth. So yeah, we're probably gonna still gonna get buds, but it's not gonna be as many buds as it could be if I don't prune this back. So, I will cut back to some nice, uh, some nice healthy side buds. Uh, the same with this piece. There is still one more step we can take to increase our odds of getting all kinds of back buds further still. So we've cut all the apical buds back to side buds. So the, the auxin production, the auxin signaling is gonna be minimal. But with these buds high up on the tree and facing upwards, it's not gonna take very long until they exert their apical dominance and they start suppressing buds further down. So there's one more thing that we can do. I can put some wire on this, put some shape into it so that it's set up to be uh, quite an attractive shape for the future. But most importantly, I can get these, these buds facing horizontally so that none of them are saying, I'm the new apex. <laughs> that wasn't strong enough to uh, be the anchor for that. Oops a daisy. Not to worry, it wasn't part of the design. Uh, I have to use a different anchor strategy though. I know it doesn't look much now, but this is the patient approach that we're taking. We set the tree up to produce maximum back buds, then we stimulate them to produce as many back buds as we possibly can where we want them, while choosing a strategy that gives us a backup plan should we need to fall back on something. It's less risky than just doing a hard chop and hoping for the best, but I like this approach the most because we're working with the tree getting the tree to move along as we progress in asking it to become a bonsai tree, rather than trying to force our will onto the tree and hoping that it responds. We set it up for success and then we ask our favours.